I want to give you an opportunity to speak to that or to what we must do to receive the gift of salvation, because that's where I want to go next, kind of bring this to an end. Is there anything that you'd like to add? I mean, with that, just interpretation, there's like, some of us God believes you got to be water baptized and baptized in tongues, but like, I haven't really, like I haven't, I've been water baptized, but I haven't spoken in tongues, because I don't know if I truly believe that, because there's another verse, I think it's in Acts or something, because I know Acts 2 is about tongues, mm -hmm. but uh, there's one where it's talking about God gives each person a gift, and not everybody gets the same gift, and you're supposed to use that gift. So like, some people will, like be gifts of like it being a good teacher, or being a good servant, or some people get gifts of tongue. And so like, based on that, I believe not everybody has to speak in tongues to be able to go, be able to have salvation. I would wholeheartedly agree with you. And if I may be blunt with you, I would like to speak to that. Mm -hmm. You said your father's part of a Pentecostal yes, church. Sir. I believe that the signs and wonders that the apostles used are not normative today. I believe one point to illustrate that is tongues. It clearly says in scripture that not every person will speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. I wish I had the verse reference on hand for you, but I would happily look it up with you. Okay. Point being, it is not a prerequisite to, to get into heaven, to have a relationship with God, to demonstrate some form of ecstatic utterance. That, that is not a necessity that's laid out in Scripture for salvation. There are verses to support that, like John 1.12. To those who did receive Him, He gave them right to become the children of God. Actually, I misquoted that. It says, to those who did receive Him, who believed in His name, He gave them the right to become children of God. Mm -hmm. The only condition there is to believe in Jesus. Yeah. Not water baptism, not tongues. I could go on to Romans 10.9. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Followed up closely by Romans 10.13, it talks about everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And make no mistake, the word Lord there is referring to seeing Jesus as the King, Yahweh, the Messiah, the one who would come sent from God to be both our Savior and ruler. So. By recognizing him as the Lord and that God truly raised him from the dead, that is the kind of faith needed to be saved. Mm -hmm. And I would say a critical part of putting your faith in Christ is repentance. What I mean specifically by that is to turn your life away from sin, to put your trust in God. You know, Isaiah talked about it like this. He said, um, let the wicked man forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God that he may abundantly pardon. Jesus said, anyone who would come after him must deny himself daily and take up his cross and follow him. Mm -hmm. These are both illustrations of turning away from wickedness and unrighteous thoughts toward God to live with him by putting your faith in him and especially by the choice to put your faith in Christ that he died for you. So, to be reconciled with God is a matter of faith. Mm -hmm. All throughout Romans it talks about being justified by faith alone. Or to use the language of the reformers, we are saved by grace through faith in Christ alone. Now, have you guys heard that? Yes. But it sounds like you think there are other ways to be saved and you think that you need to be baptized and speak in tongues to be saved. No. You don't think that? No. That's good to hear. Would you agree with what I was just telling you? Yeah, I agree with what you're saying. Just because it's based on like, everything can be drawn back to the Bible of what you believe. It's all scripture based. Praise God. That is the gift of God to us is that we can be saved by faith alone in Christ. Mm. So I have an obligation to you guys before we end this. Um, to be really frank with you, because you discern correctly, I don't think you're a Christian. I think you are a classic case of somebody who had a false conversion, meaning that you had some kind of felt experience or mystical encounter with God that you believe drew you closer to Him. And that is not how the Bible talks about coming into a relationship with God. There is one way only 
the power of God unto salvation is the gospel. I'll say that differently, actually. I got it out of order. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Not our own works, not our contrition of heart, not our own righteousness. These things are like filthy rags to God. And if you keep going the way that you're going, you're going to find yourself not only in opposition to God in this life, but you're going to die separated from Him. Well, right. I mean, that's... Yeah, I mean, I can't deny that, right? That's what the, that's, if we're basing everything off the Bible, then yeah, you're 100% correct. But, like I said, I believe in God, I believe in Jesus, or at least I, I like to think that I do, right? And... Like the thing with the Pentecostal, right? They believe in water baptism, speaking in tongues. Thing with the Catholics, they believe that the Bible is parables, right? I don't think that it's stupid. I don't think that it's dumb to say that isn't true, right? The only thing that you have to have is faith and the gospel, right? But also say that this is the only way. Like, this is the only way, right? being water baptized, speaking in tongues isn't going to hurt, right? But if you don't, in their eyes, if they were you with the microphone, they're coming to me and saying, why aren't, sure. you, speaking in, why, why aren't you speaking in tongues and getting water baptized? You're not going to heaven. So then how do you sort out who's telling the truth? If you don't. I think you can. Uh, and you can by going to the Bible yourself. Right. That's fair. That's Amen. True. Yeah, good stuff. He got me. Um, but like I said, all those people in the Pentecostal, right? Are they uneducated about the Bible? It depends on what specific thing you're talking about, and they could be. Well, if pen people who go to Pentecostal church, if they believe in water baptism and speaking in tongues, then clearly they're uneducated on those two factors, right? Sure. So, like I said, if they're with you with the mic, I'm also going to hell, right? In the same view that you have. But I'm going to hell for not necessarily the exact same reasons, right? Sure. I mean, if I told them that I am 100% a Christian, I 100% believe in God, Jesus, those are the only ways, but I haven't been water baptized and I don't speak in tongues, I'm going to hell? Not necessarily. And that actually furthers the point that you shouldn't just trust me right. as a guy with a microphone. Right. You should take what I'm telling you and go to the scriptures for yourself and right. confirm what I'm saying. Because I would raise the stakes. Right. Galatians 1 says that if somebody comes to you, even if an angel comes to you with a different gospel than the one that Paul preached, he is to be anathema. That is a strong Greek word to say cursed, mm -hmm. damned. Mm -hmm. So if I'm coming to you with a message that That's is not the gospel, right. not only am I giving you something that could send you to hell, but I am perverting the message of what oh, Jesus God. has done. Right. I'm misrepresenting him. Right wretched thing to do mm -hmm. but if you stay where you are in a nebulous zone of i don't know and maybe this or maybe that you're for sure on the way to hell right i mean yeah it's, it's fair to say i mean from your viewpoint yeah it's 100 percent fair to say but like i said is every church preaching the exact same word the consistent it's, ones are right the consistent ones are but it's all up to interpretation you can interpretate numerous stories numerous scriptures to however you would like to interpret it who are we to say that one church down the road is interpreting a different way, another church is interpreting a different way, this church isn't going to hell, but this church mm. is? It's a great question. First of all, not just, just because a bunch of other people are wrong doesn't mean the truth doesn't exist right. and that it's unknowable. Mm -hmm. Second of all, the truth has been clearly known. There is a long lineage throughout Christian right. history, stretching all the way back to the Reformation and even before. That is a consistent, simple, clear message of how to be saved. That Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures. That he was buried, that he was resurrected on the third day according to the scriptures. Right. So that anyone who puts their faith in him can receive forgiveness of their sins and eternal life. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Right. And yet people pervert it for their own reasons, depending on their denomination, their context, or whatever trying to power they're trying to attain to. Right. So it's not a legitimate uh, reason that you can give to avoid seeking out right. the truth for 100%, yourself. 100%. I so, agree. So, again, I know this is coming across blunt. Right. Now, it's, it's fair. It's a, it's a religion conversation. It's what sure. I signed up for. I knew I knew my beliefs coming into this. I knew your beliefs coming into this. So it's fine. Good. But So I understand totally. But and I think it's important to have these conversations because I hope that I, I mean, I will have learned something from you and take something from you that I'll go look up and research some more, right? But 
Do you have a Bible? Uh, yes, I do. Back at my house, not in here. I'm, I go to college in Nacogdoches over at Stephen F. Austin. Great. And I'm just here for today and tomorrow, going home tomorrow. Ah, uh, I was going to offer to reconnect with you at a later point. I would, I would love to walk through some of these right. things with you if you wanted. I'd love to get your phone number after after we could probably discuss some yeah. things. Yeah. I'd like to do that. All right, cool. I want to give you guys both an opportunity to ask any last question or make a final comment. Give you guys the floor to ask anything you like. You got anything? Uh, I have one before, but I forgot. But... I'll give you a second. You want to ask anything else? I guess my question to you that I was going to ask earlier, and you kind of kind of talked a little bit on it about going to the Bible and research on your own, is how do you know you're not your view of Christianity is not perverted? Mm -hmm. I mean, great question. I'd be happy to. So, all people are fallen. All people are prone to mistakes. However, that doesn't mean that the God, that we can't know the truth. The the core foundation of that belief comes from the fact that God is truthful and He is powerful. Mm -hmm. Therefore, He can make His Himself known to us, and He can make His truth known to us. Mm -hmm. I trust that God can do that not only for me but for all kinds of people. Right. And so, the responsibility on our half, on our behalf, is to go to the Scriptures and practice good Bible interpretation. Mm -hmm. There is a process there to learn how to read different kinds of literature. For example, I'm not going to read the book of Revelation, which is apocalyptic prophetic mm -hmm. writing, mm -hmm. in the same way that I'm going to read an epistle, right. like the book of Romans. Mm -hmm. you know, they're, they're written for two, two different, different two purposes. Different talks, yeah. So obviously, somebody that tries to read them both in the same way is going to produce some wonky theology. But by no means does that mean it's impossible. Right. It is certainly possible to clearly understand what Paul meant when he said in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death, mm -hmm. but the free gift of God is eternal life in mm -hmm. Christ Jesus our Lord. Right, yeah, it's pretty hard to interpret, or hard to mess up the interpretation. Yes. Right, yeah. So it is certainly possible. Mm -hmm. And there have been many faithful men, many faithful men, very close by actually, a church that I go to, who have consistently interpreted the word in line with historical Protestant teaching, and even before that. Mm -hmm. There is a solid line of teaching that is easily accessible, especially nowadays with the internet. Now that doesn't absolve you right. or me or anybody right. who has the responsibility yeah, yeah. to make sure that we check out what other people say mm -hmm. and to study the scriptures for ourselves. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that there is plenty of, there are plenty of resources. solid resources right. to learn how to do it for yourself. Right. Yeah? Yeah. I've, yeah. I've explored many different teachers, and there are good ones, there are plenty of bad ones. Right. So I guess my question to you is, is it your fault? How do you distinguish the difference between the good ones and the bad ones, right? I mean, you, go, you go and you research, right? And you can read the Bible and listen to everything they say, and if it lines up, it lines up, but you go listen to a different interpretation and it lines up, just interpret it a different way. Mm -hmm. Which one's the right one, which one's the wrong one? Okay, I'll give you an example. So, just because two systems of thought are both co coherent, mm -hmm. doesn't make them both right. 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 Okay? Mm -hmm. So, for example, there is a common problem in today's so-called churches to have a man-centered gospel. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is that they'll read scripture and they'll talk about the benefits that we get from God. And in their version of the gospel is to have a quote-unquote blessed life. Mm -hmm to be wealthy, healthy, and prosperous, that God somehow wants you right. to have your best yeah. life now. And that's really what the gospel supposedly is all about in this other man-centered view. And they try to justify it with all kinds of smooth-sounding scriptures, mm -hmm. smooth words that tickle people's ears to give right. them what they want to hear, because everybody likes to feel warm and fuzzy and happy. Right. How do we know that that's wrong? Because it elevates man above God. It changes the words of Jesus to manipulate them to serve our own purposes. And it mitigates, if not totally excludes, the presence of sin. Right. I like that response. That was nice. That was nice. Right? Right, yeah. Now, to the contrary, when you find a church that is solid, that is preaching the truth of God, what you will find is a high view of God mm -hmm. and a high view of Scripture. You will find in those places that God is exalted, that the gospel is about Him, what He has achieved, the worship that He is worthy to receive, and how He is so amazing that He demonstrates His love that is so different than ours by dying for people who are His enemies. Right. In those places, the center of focus is not worshiping us and what we get. Right. 
It's worshiping it's God. worshiping God yeah. and how great He is. You see the difference? All right, definitely, yeah. I like the way you answered that. Thanks. Yeah. Did you think of another question? I did. Okay. Well, thank you, fellas, for your time today. Yes, I want to give you, uh, I give you both a tract, and then I'll give you my phone number, right. and we can follow up another sure. time. What a scenario you're at. I'm not. <laughs>